Step 1. Figure out what art style you're actually going to make your art with. Art is subjective, so there's a billion different styles that you could go with. But with indie games, there are really two big ones. I'm of course talking about pixel and vector art. Game devs generally gravitate towards pixel art because it's a lot easier to get started with. Less experienced artists can just make their art in lower canvas resolutions like 8x8 or 16x16, while artists with more experience can use bigger canvases like 128 by 128 and 64 by 64. The disadvantage of being so limited as you are with pixel art is some stuff gets hard to draw. And in addition to this, a lot of games made with pixel art end up looking really similar. On the other hand, vector art is quite a bit harder to learn. But in the end, you end up with something that looks a lot more unique. Personally, I use vector art because I think it looks better, but that's just my opinion. The other disadvantage of vector art is that it's harder to find good software on a budget, but I'll get into that in a second. Step 2. Pick your software. If you choose to go with pixel art and don't want to spend any money, I recommend Krita, Piskel, or MS Paint. And if you're looking to spend some money on pixel art software, you won't really have to spend that much. A spread is the most popular way to make pixel art, and that's only $20. You're also able to compile it yourself for free, but I'd recommend buying it to support the devs. There's also Pixel Edit, which at the time of recording this video is still in beta, so it's only $9. And finally, there's Adobe Photoshop, which I wouldn't recommend if you're only using it for pixel art, but that's around $20 a month. If you choose to go with vector art, you're gonna have to spend a little more. When it comes to free programs, you don't have a lot of choices, but Inkscape is pretty good. As for paid software, I use Adobe Illustrator, which I'd recommend to anyone if it weren't for the $20 a month subscription. There's also Affinity Designer, which is normally $50, but it seems to always be on sale. And finally, there's Coral Draw, which you can get for $500 one time or pay it off with a subscription. Step 3. Pick a color palette. Really, the easiest way to make your art better is to pick good colors. Color theory can be a hard concept for people to grasp, so luckily, websites like Low Spec give us free color palettes made by people who actually know what they're doing. But if you're set on making a custom color palette, I've made two already, so maybe I can give you some tips. The first one was for my isometric mobile game called Alette. First, I did a quick Google search and found this color that I really liked from a picture. I then pulled up a list of good color schemes on the color wheel and selected a split complementary color scheme. This just means we have two complementary colors and we split one of them into its two adjacent colors. From there, I had these three colors and to add on to it, I just experimented and figured out what looked good. I wanted Alette to be calming, so I found that using pastels and just less saturated colors looked good. Step 4. Take inspiration. When you're first starting out, you need to learn and mimicking other artists that you like is a great way to learn. Now, I'm not saying to go and plagiarize your favorite artist's work, because that's unethical and illegal. But the more you keep learning from other artists, the more your art style will start to emerge. Step 5. Use references. In your head right now, think of an elephant. Now, without looking at any pictures or anything, try and draw that elephant on a piece of paper. Chances are, it looks nothing like the elephant in your head. This is because the human brain forgets smaller details to make sense of the bigger picture. As an example, when you first saw that elephant, probably in a picture or in a movie, you might have noticed some little details on its hair and ears. But your brain thought those details were unimportant and eventually just forgot them. All artists of all skill levels use references and there's no shame in doing so. I like to grab an image of what I'm drawing, whether that's from Google or a picture I take in real life, and then I give it some transparency and put it on the top layer of my art program. Step 6. Keep it simple. Unless you really know what you're doing, you should keep your art as consistent as possible. If you draw something super detailed and complicated, it's hard to replicate that for the rest of your art. Whereas if you draw something in a simple art style, it's a lot easier to replicate that. Step 7. Practice. This is really the only way that you're going to get better. If possible, set aside some time every day to do some art. If you're doing pixel art, I'd recommend watching some Mort Mort tutorials. And if you're doing vector art, I'd recommend the channel's Satori Graphics. And yeah, that's about it. Hopefully this was helpful to you and you learned something. If you haven't already, join the Discord server and thank you to Pludgy for boosting twice. And yeah, hit like if you like, also hit like if you dislike, and please subscribe. And have a great day.